I think it's finally time to say goodbye to Klein and make the jump to Rook Line after this game changing update. Seriously, it's haven't even been a month and Rook Line is already blowing my mind with feature I didn't know that I needed. They brought down an incredible improvement in this update, like integrating the Aether tools such as architect mode and the ask mode and letting you control what kind of models they talk to and switch a model on the fly and even adding enhancer prompt inside the chat box with just one click. It's like they're taking everything good about coding assistant and made it even better in one place. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly why Rookline becoming the go-to assistant for developers and how you can make the most out of it in this new update. So let's dive in. In yesterday's video, before I end it, I show you that there is actually a Rookline update. And today there is another update. Before I start talking about it, I'm going to apply this update and show you what is new inside it. First, let's talk about the 3.0 update. This update was actually one of the most impressive ones that I have seen for a while because it's mimic something that we have seen before. In either there is something called architect on ask, and of course, the default one is code. This three actually right now existing in rogue line. They have been added in the 3.0 update. In the chat box, right now we have different UI. We have down below and a drop down that will show you different mode for talking to rock line. We have code, the default one, the architect, the ask, and each one of them actually you have control over. For example, the architect, you can go to the prompt, which is above is in the top over here. Click it. You can customize the architect prompt as much as you want. And you can see he review the system prompt and read it over here, the tools that it use, the ABI configuration. If you want to only use a certain model for the architect, you can do that. I'm going to show you how in a, just a second. And for each different mode that we have, the architect, the ask, the code, you can actually customize and control the prompt enhancement. The prompt enhancement is something new added. It used to be only working with the open router models ABI. Right now it exists down here for it for each model that we want it's one of the best thing that i ever got from rock line so far because i used to to copy the prompt that i write inside visual studio code go to chat gbt or sonnet or gemini and tell it to enhance this prompt then i copy it back to visual studio code which is just annoying and i'm going to show you this in action in a few minutes and we have here also another drop down. This is called the default. The default is different profile. The profile is something also newly added. You can add here configuration for your profile. The default one is going to be always the first one that you get. You can add here another one. It's copy of it and you can rename it. For example, I want, I want to call this one the Gemini. Because I will use the Gemini thinking experiment inside it. I can call it Gemini architect actually or Gemini thinking. This one will be used inside the prompt. I can click the prompt box over here. And in the architect, I can go down below and select the Gemini thinking. I think using a O1 like model in architect mode is like a very good idea. I'm going to click done. And when I select the architect, it will switch back to Gemini thinking. If you didn't like this, I don't know what you're going to like, to be honest. But for example, we can create also one for code mode. We can call this one coding code. I'm going to use with it the Anthropic Sonnet 3.5 and I click done. And when I switch back to code done, when I'm going to select the code, I will get the code profile. When I select the architect, it will zoom in. I thinking and I select the ask. It will stay default for the last thing that I have. I can create something for it. I can use the Gemini flash model with it or the Gemini 1206. It's also another awesome model. Set up the entire profile for each different mode. I might change the code profile to something more understandable like anthropic or the sonnet 3.5 done right now it's better 
And we also got the same thing that we have inside client, this kind of menu that we can select from down below. And you can select auto approve, edit file, execute approve command, use the browser, the MCB servers. The customization of the prompt and profile actually came in the 3.1 update. But to be quite honest, the 3.0 and the 3.1, they came in the almost the same week. You can also go to the subreddit of Rockline. They created a subreddit for Rockline just to talk about the feature and what's coming and what's new in terms of update. It's extremely brand new. You see, there's less than 500 members over there and 16 online there. If you want to feature, you can add it here or ask about something inside Rockline that you don't understand. It's an amazing community. Yeah, I know a lot of people here read it but this subreddit is really cool to keep eye on when you're using this extension i'm gonna try to show you the three modes in one example i have this newsletter component and there is nothing there there is no there is no logic either in the back end database nothing so i'm gonna start by asking the architect what i need for a good newsletter then i'm gonna take their information use it in the code, then finally show you what I can ask about this code. Let's test the enhancement for the prompt, the architect mode, the Gemini thinking model. Tell me what I need to consider in terms of the logic for building newsletter, making user input only the email. I'm gonna hit the enhancer prompt. Maybe I should copy this first. It didn't give me the enhancer prompt immediately because the prompt for, it should give you only the enhanced prompt, reply with the only enhanced prompt, no conversation, explanation, leading or bullet points, nothing. Basically, you just get a dry enhancement. And it did give me this part, but this is not the entire thing. Input validation, duplicate entry handling, data storage, security, subscription, confirmation mechanism, error handling, and user feedback, compliance with the data privacy regulation, the DB, GDPR, in Europe, scalability for handling large num number. So it did give me some points, but it's not exactly what I wanted to get, but I'm, I know what I need. I'm gonna switch to the coding mode and I'm gonna write here what I want to create first. And now in the code mode, I'm gonna ask it in the Barisma schema, which is the table schema that I have, add table for the newsletter, that will store the user's email and ensure it's unique. I'm gonna hit the enhance and see what will happen. So the enhancer prompt is not perfect yet. I can see this because the response is not correct. If I send this to the sonnet, I am pretty sure it's gonna be confused because I can see here the AI think about what I need to do. This is the enhanced prompt part, the defined Barisma schema model name newsletter subscription within the Barisma file and all the stuff. I'm gonna copy it, paste it, and I'm gonna use it. Okay, did add the newsletter subscription table. Hit save. And task is complete. And also I love that it did give me a copy to the summary of the entire task, which yesterday in a video, I said, you can use this summary to start a new fresh task, but using the entire in a summary of the last task to continue working. So in a new fresh task, I copied the summary of the last thing that we did and, I, and based it over here. Then I added add a validation for telling it, add validation for it in this kind of folder using Zod and write logic for the newsletter in this controller, newsletter subscription controller i made it for it using the barisma connection that i have in utils and the error message handling and also the utils files i'm gonna hit enter and see what sonnet do this is the validation that it got me it's a simple validation for the email i'm gonna hit save and this is the controller logic i read it because before i say save because i used to completely apply everything that i get from Sonnet or large language model, which is wrong. And the logic seemed very good actually using the error handling, the barisma that I give it from utils. And I'm gonna hit save and this task is done. Now let's switch to the ask mode. I here give it the logic that we got from the Sonnet and I tell it, tell me what do you think about this logic? 
and I'm using the Gemini 1206 in this mode and I'm gonna hit enter so it did look at it and tell me that it's positive aspect potential improvement what I can improve and uh, positive aspect for this function the unsubscribe function the get all subscription function right that's that's a very highly analytic kind of response for each function it look at it and tell me there is a positive there is potential improvement like in the list all the subscriptions imagination and i have here more it need more error handling the authorization this is going to be in the router and it tell me this should be admin only which is correct recommendation implement input validation i already did this enhance the error login i will try to do this for the entire project ensure proper authorization this will happen in the raw level consider pagination for get subscription so i think i'm gonna go back to get all subscription logic and ask for pagination when i'm listing it and this is kind of very good to be honest i didn't expect this this is really good i'm gonna try something kind of new I'm gonna stay in the same task that we created using the same model Gemini 1206 but I'm gonna switch the mode to coding I'm gonna ask it just to add pagination to this function and I'm gonna hit send I'm gonna see what will happen now the task is completed and I love I love how it's planning read the file modify the function update the response write the update file and this all this is the tools that Rookline gave it to the large language model to use our file and modify it basically. Just to give the architect mode one more try, I'm gonna give it the same model, the 1206 model. I'm gonna ask it to, well, I'm gonna ask it just simple question, what it think about the server folder? So it seems asking the, the architect mode about the entire folder structure is the right thing to do when you're trying to use it like right now it's telling me the controllers it understand that this directory have all the logic but it did give me suggestion and tell me what it's good separating the controller from routes promote clean separation of concern which the logic that i actually tend to use when i write back in logic and suggesting if the application grow larger you might consider further organization for the controller into sub directory which is kind of understandable but this project will not grow this kind of big and i already have subfolder for each controller and for middleware the good centralization for the middleware and the only thing that it want me to do is naming the middleware middlewares routes the good thing having routes suggesting similar to controller creating sub route i the only folder that is completely messed up in terms of how I handle it is the routes, okay, the validation. I'm pretty sure it's gonna tell me to rename it, yeah. So the architect model is kind of something that you will use to get suggesting and to understand what you're doing good and what you're doing bad in your folder. Not just asking about something before you build it. And I think if you want to ask about something before you build it, I'm gonna use the ask mode, not the architect mode. I feel like the extension is getting better by every single week. I know they take a weekend break like everyone else in USA and Europe, but the new updates is just fascinating. Like the improvement that I'm getting and the option that I have, the switching model on the fly, and uh, different modes the enhancement prompt needs some work because i'm not getting the enhanced prompt directly i'm getting the entire response of the model which is honestly kind of useless the ability to control from here the auto approved and read and basically edit files on the fly is really cool client has this for weeks right now right now Rook client also have it right now there have 36 36,000 download already and client have more than 354,000 download. So like there is a major difference between of them, but trust me, Rook line is right now in a better place than client itself. I would like to know what you guys think about Rook line. Do you think Cursor and Windsurf and client better or not? And yes, this extension is for free. 
I know a lot of people think this you have to pay money. You don't have to pay money downloading it, but you only pay money when you're using the model that you want. Like for example, if you want to use the DeepSeq, you have to pay for the DeepSeq API. If you want to use the Sonnet or the Haiku model from Anthropic, you will have to pay for Anthropic. But the extension itself is 100% for free and open source. So that being said, if you found this video respecting your time and providing you with valuable information, please hit the like and subscribe button. So finally, thank you for watching and see you in the coming video.